Hi, boys and girls. Today is Tuesday, April 20th. You're going to be listening and watching Unique Animals, Part 1. Um, this story is kind of long, so we've separated it into two parts. Part 1 for today, Tuesday, and Part 2 for tomorrow, Wednesday. And we break down each of the sections of the animals. So there's going to be a little bit of work as we go through the slides and I'll explain them. Um, and it, right now it looks like complete the assignments on slides four, five, eight, 11, and 13. That looks like a lot, but there's not very much on each slide. You just have to answer one or two things on each slide. Okay, so let's get started. This is the cover page that you would normally see. These are all animals unique to the Southwest. In the Southwest are um, states like Nevada and New Mexico. So you're gonna see that as we go through this. Unique Animals of the Southwest by Tanya Lee Stone. Introduction. There are four major deserts in the Southwest region. Parts of the Chihuahuan Desert fall in Texas and New Mexico. The Sonoran Desert covers almost half of Arizona. Part of the Mojave Desert crosses into Nevada and the Great Basin Desert blankets a huge part of Nevada. A variety of wildlife lives in these deserts and in the rest of the Southwest region. Some of these animals are especially well known. Caption, a variety of unique animals, including the Gila monster, make their home in the American Southwest. Caption, this peccary makes its home in the American Southwest. Map, map of Southwestern United States. Map labels, Nevada. Great Basin Desert, Las Vegas, Mojave Desert, Arizona, Phoenix, Sonoran Desert, Santa Fe, New Mexico, Oklahoma, Dallas, Texas, Houston, Chihuahuan Desert. Okay, so on this very next slide, you're going to use the previous slide, which contained page 241, and you're going to identify, use that map on the slide before us, and um, identify where the uh, four deserts are located. So go back to that map, and then on the screen, type in the state in the United States where those deserts are located, okay? Then you're also going to look at the photographs on page 240 and 241, which were that first slide, read the captions, and how are these animals alike or different? And it's the Gila monster. You're gonna come up with one fact right here of how they're the same, and then one fact for the Gila monster and the Pickery. Okay, very good. Caption, road runners use their long legs to chase down prey. Here, a road runner carries a lizard off for an afternoon meal. Racing around. The road runner is a common sight in the Southwest and is the state bird of New Mexico. These birds are made for running. They have long legs that are very strong. Their feet are strong too. Road runners can run more than 15 miles, 24 kilometers per hour. They have long tails that help them balance when they run. Although these birds can fly, they do not do it very often. Road runners use their speed to escape predators, an animal that hunts another animal for food. Hawks and coyotes are their main predators. Road runners also run to chase prey, an animal that is hunted by another animal for food. These birds eat insects, lizards, and snakes. They also eat bird eggs and small rodents.
In addition to being fast runners, road runners are able to hop around and change direction quickly. This helps confuse or tire another animal. Road runners use this trick on rattlesnakes. As soon as the snake gets tired from trying to strike at the road runner, the bird stabs the snake with its strong beak. Road runners are so fast on their feet they can even snatch a hummingbird or dragonfly that flies too close. Caption: Road runners have long tails that help them balance when they run. Armored armadillos. Armadillos are related to sloths and anteaters. The nine-banded armadillo is the state mammal of Texas. It is also found in Oklahoma and in southern states east of Texas. Armadillos are mainly nocturnal. This means they sleep during the day and are active at night. They sometimes search for food in the daytime. They eat ants, beetles, and termites. Their sharp sense of smell helps them find food. They use their long, sticky tongues to pull ants and termites from their nests. Armadillos eat other kinds of insects too. They also feed on fruit, bird eggs, snakes, and carrion, dead animals. Caption. The armadillo uses its sharp sense of smell to find ants, beetles, and termites. An armadillo is about 18 to 22 inches, 46 to 56 centimeters long. Its tail adds an extra 9 to 15 inches, 23 to 38 centimeters. It has a long pointy nose and large pointy ears. Armadillos are born with soft, leathery skin. As they grow, their skin starts to harden. They develop bony plates that cover most of their bodies. This bony plating is used for protection. When it is in danger, an armadillo can curl up. That way, its soft belly stays safe. This protects it from enemies. Armadillos also use speed to escape enemies. They slip into burrows to hide when necessary. Armadillos use their strong legs and claws to dig burrow more than six feet, two meters deep and 15 feet, five meters long. Burrows are used for sleeping, escaping danger and nesting. Nine banded armadillos are the only mammals that give birth to four identical babies. Caption. Armadillos curl into a ball to protect their soft belly when they sense danger. Okay, so in the very next slide then, you're going to look a back at page 244 just before us and tell me what the word nocturnal means in the yellow box. And then you're gonna come up with one way that the armadillo and the road runner actually protect themselves in the boxes below, okay? Collared peccaries are a common sight throughout the Southwest. This mammal looks like a pig, but belongs to its own family. They are 35 to 45 inches, 89 to 114 centimeters long. They weigh 30 to 60 pounds, 14 to 27 kilograms. A collared peccary gets its name from the band of fur around its neck. It is also called a javelina or a musk hog. Smell plays a big part in this animal's life. It gives off a strong odor and can be smelled from a few hundred feet away. It is also good at using its nose to find other members of its herd. These animals usually live in groups of 12 to 15. They have a scent gland on their backs. This is used to mark territory. Caption, a collared peccary uses its excellent sense of smell to sniff out its favorite foods. Collared peccaries also use their excellent sense of smell to find food. They can sniff out roots several inches under the ground. They eat roots, herbs, nuts, berries, 
and grasses. They also feed on fruit and worms. One of their favorite foods is the prickly pear cactus. Females usually give birth to two babies. The whole herd helps look out for the young. A baby can travel with the herd when it is only a day old. These animals can run fast, up to 25 miles, 40 kilometers per hour. They usually choose to run from a predator. They also make noises to alert the rest of the herd. If it has to, a collared peccary will use its sharp teeth on an enemy. A collared peccary can even fight off a bobcat or coyote. Caption, baby peccaries can keep up with their mothers a day after their birth. Cunning coyotes. A coyote is a medium-sized member of the dog family. It is related to the wolf, but is much smaller. It has pointy ears and a droopy, bushy tail. Its tail is about as long as its body. Coyotes can be found in most parts of North America, but these wild dogs are a common sight in the Southwest. They even live in neighborhoods and cities. Like all wild dogs, coyotes communicate with each other through sounds. Coyotes howl, bark, whine, and growl. In fact, scientists have discovered that coyotes make many different sounds. Different sounds have different meanings, such as danger or keep out. Coyotes also communicate with each other by moving their ears and tails different ways. Caption. A coyote howls for its pack. Coyotes howl, whine, and growl to communicate with each other. Caption, a coyote feasts on a rodent. Coyotes hunt alone, in pairs, or in a small group. They have keen hearing and an excellent sense of smell. A coyote can run up to 40 miles, 64 kilometers per hour. They are great swimmers and can leap up to 13 feet, four meters. All of these things make coyotes good hunters. They will eat almost anything, but seem to prefer small mammals, such as mice, rats, rabbits, and squirrels. They also eat carrion, fruits, and vegetables. Coyotes often mate for life. The female usually gives birth to her pups inside a safe, cozy den. Coyotes either build their own dens or take over the home of another animal. A coyote pair raises its young together. Pups are born blind and with floppy ears. Within about 10 days, their ears start to stand up and they are able to see. Caption, these coyotes hunt together for their favorite foods, but will eat almost anything. All right, so on the next slide, you're going to use the text and clues from the previous slide to tell me in the middle something that is that a coyote and the wolf do right here in the center. And then on the side, something unique about the coyote. And then on the right hand side, something unique about the wolf. Okay, our very last one is coming up. Raccoon relatives, ringtails and coatis, are both related to raccoons and both live in the Southwest. The ringtail is Arizona's state mammal. It is also found in Nevada, Oklahoma, Texas, and New Mexico. A ringtail is about the size of a house cat. It gets its name from its long bushy tail that has black and white rings. Ringtails are nocturnal. They sleep most of the day in small spaces, such as rock crevices and hollow logs. At night, they hunt. They are expert climbers and have excellent hearing and eyesight. This makes them good hunters. Ringtails eat small mammals, lizards, frogs, and birds. They also eat snakes, insects, and fruit. Caption, the ringtail hunts at night. White-nosed coatis also eat both plants and animals. They like fruits, nuts, insects, and eggs. They also eat 
rodents, lizards, and snakes. Coatis eat carrion too. As its name suggests, the white-nosed coati has a white snout. Unlike ringtails, the coati is a diurnal animal. This means it sleeps at night and is active during the day. Like ringtails, white-nosed coatis are good climbers. Their long tails help them balance while in trees. Caption: The coati looks for food during the day. Both ringtails and coatis are excellent climbers. Okay, so your very last thing then, boys and girls, with part one, is to compare the ringtails and the coatis. In the center, something that is similar about both of them that they share in common. And then on the left-hand side, ringtails, and on the right-hand side, coatis. All right, that's all for now. Oh, yeah, that's all for now.